As you say, there's a lot to get to, with more than half of the United States reporting a surge in new coronavirus infections. Health officials are resounding the alarm, warning Americans they should be concerned about these escalating numbers. The nation's top infections disease expert, that is Dr. Anthony Fauci, he emphasized this during a House hearing on Capitol Hill yesterday. In some respects, we've done very well. However, in other areas of the country, we're now seeing a disturbing surge of infections that looks like it's a combination, but one of the things is an increase in community spread. And that's something that I'm really quite concerned about. Now, just hours after this, President Trump hosted an indoor campaign rally in Phoenix with an estimated 3,000 supporters in attendance. Arizona is one of those states that has seen an uptick in cases recently, but the president used the rally as an opportunity to praise the country's response to the pandemic, claiming the coronavirus is, quote, going away. Weijia Jang is standing by for us at the White House. All right, Weijia. So when Dr. Fauci and other experts testified on Capitol Hill yesterday, they said that the Trump administration had not asked them to slow down testing despite the president's controversial comments over the weekend about doing exactly that. Well, the president spoke about testing again last night. He, you asked him about it before he got on Marine One yesterday on his way to Arizona. What do you have to say to those supporters? So President Trump reiterated much of what he had been saying already, which is that testing is a double-edged sword. He said that on the one hand, you know, the administration is using it to find cases, and that's a good thing. But he said they are using it to make us look bad. Presumably, uh, you know, whoever is reporting the fact that even though there are are more tests, there are also more cases. And so, um, you know, President Trump believes that it is not a, now a tool just to make it look like um, there are more cases in the U.S. Uh, than other parts of the world. But the fact is that, yes, because of those tests, we are uh, seeing a rise in cases, just like Dr. Fauci said. And I think the question is, you know, why? If the U.S. is doing everything that it should to be containing this virus, then why aren't the numbers actually going down? Um, because as we heard from doctors and researchers, testing is such a critical tool um, for finding the virus, for keeping people separated, and, and to really trying to, to get it out of here. Um, and so the president continues this um, very uh, strange line of reasoning. And uh, again, um, like you mentioned, Vlad, before he actually went to this event, he said he wasn't kidding when he asked his people to slow down testing because, again, he thinks it makes him and the administration look bad. On Air Force One, his press secretary, Kaylee McEnany, uh, told reporters that he was using sarcasm to make a serious point. So by this point, there's just so much um, interpretation that it is confusing to keep up with everything. But the bottom line from this White House this morning is that um, they, you know, have a very robust testing system here in the U.S. and they don't plan on scaling down. Yeah, there's nothing bad about identifying who has tested positive with this virus, so we can contain it. That's the idea. Um, I want to ask you about something else. Uh, national Secure, former National Security Advisor John Bolton's book hit the shelves yesterday. Uh, Nora O'Donnell spoke to Bolton a little bit about some of the allegations inside the book. Here's what he had to say. You labeled the President of the United States a danger to the Republic. That's quite a charge. How is he dangerous? Well, I think in the national security field, his decision making is not uh, anchored in any uh, discernible philosophy. He has no grand strategy. If the president is such a danger to the republic, you left office nine months ago. Why wait so long to let the country know that? Well, I think it's important to try and explain what I saw in as comprehensive a fashion as I could. So we should remind everyone that Bolton's book is published by Simon & Schuster, which is a division of Viacom CBS. Um, the uh, White House tried to block this, um, this book from being published. Obviously, that didn't happen. So what now? What are we hearing from the White House? 
Well, they haven't formally responded to the fact that this book is out there. Um, but I think even going into it, they knew that this emergency injunction was not likely going to be approved by a judge, considering hundreds of thousands of copies had already been shipped all around the world. And all week, even before the book dropped, and even last week, um, we had been hearing from officials, from the president himself, really going after uh, Bolton's character and his credibility, saying that it is full of lies um, and falsehoods, and he's only writing this book now to make money. Uh, at the same time, they're saying it's full of classified information, and that's why they tried to prevent it um, from going out to the masses, uh, and they argue that both things can be true. And and so it is important to note that the judge said, even though he wasn't going to um, prevent this book from being published, that he said Bolton could face some uh, criminal charges or uh, the government could uh, prevent him from, from getting any money from this book and any you know, projects that stem from it. And that's something that President Trump said in a recent interview about this. He said he doesn't think that Bolton's going to get any money. Um, and, and that's in addition to some other colorful names that he called his formal, former national security advisor. Hmm. Uh, Weijia, let me switch gears here and ask you about this. Uh, as you know, the administration has announced it is appointing two new high-level staffers to the Census Bureau. But there's already some controversy uh, behind those appointments. Explain. Well, that's because these two positions didn't exist before. And so Democrats and former officials at the Census Bureau are really questioning the motivation for bringing them on now, because now um, there are uh, two more political appointees that are involved in this really critical process to try to count exactly who is in the U.S. and where they are. Um, and so I can tell you that uh, the former director of the Bureau said, and I thought this was a really telling um, interview with the Washington Post, he said, it seems the White House is trying to get some political control over the census at this sensitive time, um, and that could produce the likelihood of higher counts in red states. Now, why does that matter? Because if there are higher counts, those states, those areas get more money, more funding. And that's why there's so much uh, criticism that, you know, this could be politically motivated to try to help um, those people who are supporters of the president. Hmm. Uh, Weijia Jang, thank you so much. Sure.